Hi, assalamualaikum. This is Shannon with middlewaymom.com. Schiller Math contacted me a little while ago and asked me to do a review of their kit one with my kids. Um, I have to tell you, I was actually, it took me a little while to say yes because uh, we have been really, really happy with our math program. Um, but I decided to say yes, it looked really interesting and I'm really, really glad I did. So I just wanted to jump right into things and tell you a little bit about it. So first, Schiller Math is a math program for ages 4 through 13. Um, there's two different kits. I got kit 1. Kit 1 is for ages 4 through 8. Um, kit 2 is for ages 9 through 13. It is a Montessori-based approach, and it takes the um, spiral method, which one of the things that I really, really like about the spiral method is that you can touch on something a kid can mostly get it, and even if they are not 100% certain, they'll come back to it. Or, um, you know, if even if they knew it, sometimes it's real easy for them to forget, um, you know, some of the concepts or just for things to get rusty, and so it's really no problem, and they come right back around to it. Um, so part of the Montessori-based approach is you know, simple things that we know of Montessori, you put everything away and, you know, this is in the instruction that's in the parent guide that, you know, you set everything out and you put everything away before you end. But also that it goes through the different steps of like, I explain something to my child and then, um, you know, I might have them repeat those things with me and then my child will say it themselves or do it themselves. Um, so it's a very gentle approach to learning math. And I love that it starts so gentle that for kids, it's really easy for them to love math right away. Um, first, I wanted to show you the teacher book. So the teacher book is all encompassing. Um, so there's three of them that come with kit one and it should take you about four or five years to go through them. So this has um, diagnostic tests, review tests, um, and then of course your lesson. So like this lesson is um, take out the unit cubes in the one to nine number cards, take out number five card, place it on your working mat, which is a very Montessori thing to do. And then you ask them, what is this number? And you may bring me out this number of unit cubes. So that's just kind of an idea of how it works. Um, one thing that I really liked about this, especially coming from a different curriculum, is that there, throughout the book, there's different assessments. Um, so what I did is I jumped to the first assessment and we found the lessons that we needed to review because of course, different math curriculums decide to teach different things in different orders, right? Um, so one math curriculum might start with left and right and rotations and those type of things, and another one might do that a little bit later on. So we started with the first assessment, um, went back and reviewed a couple things, and then we just jumped to the next assessment, and I'll say right on the numbers that you are working on, which lessons go with that question. Um, and then I just have like a little checklist that I go through and I check all the thing, all the ones that we need to review. Um, so that has been very helpful. Now, the answer key and the consumable pages are all online, which I have, um, I've actually just downloaded the answer key to my Kindle Fire. And so I, I don't have it printed out, but I have it right available for me. Um, I try to use as little paper as I can get away with. Uh, so that's been really nice for me, and I personally just make photocopies of the book, um, you know, but to each their own. So the manipulatives also most, so we have been working on book one for my pre preschooler and first grader. Um, mostly we, with my first grader over the last month, we've been doing a lot of review. So one of the big things that we've been using are these, oops, oh, there we go. Um, these shapes. So some of these shapes are like diamonds and there are hearts and trapezoids and hexagons. So a little bit more than some of the other um, pattern blocks that you might see that don't have like the trapezoids and stuff. And they're different colors. So, you know, that brings us to, again, rotations. And, you know, for my preschooler, I mean, it starts out with the very basic of this is a square. Can you repeat for me? This is a square. This is a circle. Um, so for, especially for parents when 
at least for myself, I found that um, when my kids were younger and I didn't have an older sibling for them to really play with as much during the day and I felt like I had to have activities for them to do, um, this is a great start of having activities for them to do and it's very gentle, like I've said before. Um, some of the other manipulatives, I did a Facebook Live that went through the entire box. Um, so if you go to Facebook um, and find my page, Middleway Mom, you will find my Facebook Live on there. But, you know, there's other, like the coins and there's unit blocks and um, dominoes and again, the unit blocks. Um, so there's almost every single lesson uses the manipulatives. Um, if it doesn't, there's usually like coloring pages. So it's very hands on. Um, so what is Schiller math? I wanted to talk about what it is and what it isn't. What it is is a gentle approach to math, as I've said. Um, we really only just talk about one snippet of information in each lesson. So there are many times that we go through like three lessons in one day because they want to do more. Um, and it even says in the teacher guide, if your child wants to do more, do it. If they don't, then just stop. It's very Charlotte Mason friendly in that way where the lessons are very short, where I found with other math curriculums, um, I have to set a timer in order for me to abide by my Charlotte Mason um, time limits. And we have to stop in the middle of a lesson um, in order to stop at that point. So with this one, it's I can usually do like two lessons in each time period. And a lot of times my kids don't want to stop. They really, truly enjoy it. Um, another thing what Schiller Math is, uh, it's focused on making patterns and groups. So at least, you know, one of my one of my main experiences with elementary math is with Right Start Math, and their main um, tool is the abacus. They use the abacus for you to see those groups, um, to make those distinctions that eight is five and three, you know, they have songs and that kind of thing. With Schiller Math, um, they start very early on with the unit cubes and then taking nine and separating that into different groups. So like three, 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 or five and four. Um, and just manipulating that as they see fit. Um, another thing that I noticed with this is it through book one and book two, so you get the three books in kit one. Through book one and book two, there's a lot of foundation laying of understanding math concepts, just understanding how math or how numbers work. And on book three, it feels like now you're doing those things that are harder, you know, like, um, multiplication, division, those types of things. So as I was peeking through book one and book two, it looked like it might be behind some um, some expectations that people have of what uh, first grade might look like, but then it really dives into it in book three. So it lays this very, very strong foundation of understanding how to manipulate numbers rather than these are the steps for addition, these are the steps for subtraction. It has you understand how you can move those things around and you see addition and you see subtraction instead of just following those steps. Um, and like I said earlier, it is a spiral method. So you do come back around to um, discussing shapes or left and right, um, and you know what whatever you may have it's multiplication and um, you know columns and rows and all these different things so what Schiller math is not you will not find a lot of drills in Schiller math you will not find a lot of workbook pages again there are consumable pages um, especially what we've done in book one so far we're around like lesson 85 out of a hundred about 180 lessons. So we're more than a third of the way through lesson or book one. And um, most of the stuff has been coloring or writing your numbers or uh, following a pattern. So like if you see a pattern one plus one, then you continue writing one plus one, one plus one in the squares or, you know, comparing sizes and being able to um, cut those out and lay things on top of each other. Um, so it hasn't been a lot of writing number sentences, that kind of thing so far. Um, 
which you find in a lot of more uh, traditional workbooks, like the Cuban workbooks and those type of things, I find that a plus. I like that um, they are working with the numbers instead of looking at the numbers and writing the numbers um, when we're working with addition, subtraction, those type of things. Uh, another thing, this is not pushing kids past their comfort zone, especially at this age. Um, you know, when we're in book one and we're talking about kindergartners and first graders and preschoolers, um, it doesn't do well to push kids very far past their comfort zone when it comes to academics. We want them to feel like they can grasp something that we want to keep them in that arena where it's fun to learn and not where, you know, their head is starting to hurt and I don't want to do this anymore. So it says in the teacher guide, work on this until they find closure. So you might work on one lesson for a couple times until they find closure. So we don't have to move forward. And again, like I said, you know, there's some days where we breeze through three lessons and another day where we might stay on that one lesson and work on it until we find closure. So in conclusion, um, you know, my kids love this. I offered for um, Amina, who is my first grader, to switch back to our other uh, math program today. And she said she didn't want to. Um, she wants to stay with Schiller Math. So I think we will be doing that um, at least in the near future. We'll continue as all homeschooling goes. You um, assess it as you go on. Um, but my kids really, really love it. So Amina wants to stay with it. Amatula, my four-year-old, asks to do lessons. She loves having her own lesson time. Um, and it's so easy to incorporate my two-year-old with it because I give her some of the manipulatives. She feels like she's doing the same thing. And even for her, you know, those very beginning lessons, this is a heart, this is a diamond. You know, she's learning some of these new words or she's practicing, you know, um, making these connections. Um, it's really, really easy to use. You just open up the teacher book. It ha It's scripted for you. It tells you what is this number. Uh, you may bring me this number of unit cubes. You don't have to think for yourself very much. You can wake up, roll out of bed, and just get started. Um, and like I've said multiple times, it's super gentle, but you know, sometimes we feel like things have to be hard in order for it to be worth it. Um, I do believe that this is a really good foundation to mathematical success. As somebody who loves, loves math, um, it's really important to me that my kids understand it in a way that is not a whole lot of work for them to pick numbers apart and put them back together. Um, you know, we see with um, Common Core where we're teaching kids, you know, 27 plus 32 and then we're moving things around so we're actually adding let's say 25 to 34 or you know something that's a little bit easier for them to work with or like 25 plus 25 plus 9 is actually what Common Core might do. So instead of adding steps, adding rules, we just understand how we can work with these numbers and we can see this in our mind's eye, whether it be through the abacus or through the unit cubes or through the dominoes or whatever it is, we give them all of these tools to be able to see numbers in whatever way clicks with them and that builds this beautiful foundation for them to go on and be able to understand harder math concepts because their number sense is so strong. So if you have any other questions, please feel free to shoot me an email. Um, it's Shannon, S-H-A-N-N-E-N, -N -N, at middlewaymom.com, or leave me a comment here or on Facebook. I mean, there's a million different ways to get a hold of me. So again, you can find me at middlewaymom.com or on Facebook as Middlewaymom. Thank you, and have a good day.